This video outlines how to take a range of great astrophotography shots with the little Canon G5X PowerShot camera. Other Canon PowerShot cameras, the G1X and the G7X, are almost identical, so you can try these methods on those cameras too. I purchased this camera as a compact, lightweight travel camera, but one of its other big attractions was its built-in astrophotography functions. This little camera takes fantastic everyday photos, plus a range of amazing astrophotos too. In this video, I'll try and explain how you can take great astrophotos yourself. There are two main approaches to astrophotography with this camera. One, switch to the special scene mode and use one of the four built-in astrophotography functions and let the camera make most of the setting decisions for you. Or two, switch to manual mode where you make all the decisions. But I'll get to the manual mode later. The majority of this video will look at the built-in star shoot functions you will find in the special scene mode so turn the mode dial to SCN. We'll start with a simple star portrait mode. Press the control drive button, that's the top one, on the control dial and you will see the four star shoot functions you can choose from. Rotate the control dial to star portrait and click set. Star portrait allows you to take a nighttime portrait of someone using the camera's flash and also capture the sky and stars behind your subject. It does this by merging two photos. The first is very short with the flash and the second a longer exposure to capture the stars. So your subject must remain very still for the entire shot and your camera must be mounted on a tripod and the flash popped up. To stop camera shake you should use the self timer function click the menu button, click across to camera menu 2 and select self timer. Set it to 2 seconds if you are taking star portraits of another person or 10 seconds if you plan to step in front of the camera for a star selfie. Compose the shot, push the shutter button to start the process and then take your hand away from the camera. If the flash is too bright or too dark, you can control its brightness by pressing the flash button on the control dial and then quickly rotating the front dial to change the flash brightness up or down. See the setting change in the lower right corner of the screen. You can also make the entire image brighter or darker by rotating the exposure compensation dial to a more positive or negative setting. You can also slightly adjust the size of stars by clicking the menu button, clicking across to camera menu 5 and selecting star emphasis. The off setting leaves the stars as normal, sharp makes them small points and soft makes the brighter stars slightly bigger. The next mode is star nightscape. This mode is essentially identical to Star Portrait, but without the use of the flash to illuminate a foreground target. You will still need to use the self timer to avoid camera shake. Making sure your stars are in focus can be a challenge. There are two ways to get your stars in focus. The camera has an automated star focus function. When your camera is on the tripod and ready, click the asterisk button on the back of the camera to open the star autofocus and then press set to start the process. The other option is to manually focus the camera at infinity. Click the manual focus button on the control dial, click to manual focus and use the top button on the control dial to move the focus point out to infinity. To take your star landscape just press and release the shutter button and the self timer will trigger the shot. But there can be a lot of variability in star nightscapes due to the brightness of the sky or phases of the moon. So you might need to play with the exposure compensation dial to make your scene brighter or perhaps even darker. 
So take a range of shots with differing exposure compensation and compare the results. Depending upon your sky, you might also feel the sky in your images looks a little too yellow or perhaps even too blue. You can adjust this by changing the color compensation setting. Click the menu button and select camera menu 5 and open the color adjustment function. Using the control dial buttons, click towards the more blue B or more red A setting and try another shot to see the effect. But the main variable you will play with on star landscape shots is exposure compensation. So experiment with that and see what works best for your conditions. The next mode to explore is star trails. In this mode, the camera shoots multiple short images and automatically merges them to create a virtual long exposure image, displaying the movement of the stars across the sky. Mount your camera on a tripod and set the self timer to two seconds. By turning the large control ring on the front of the camera, you can change the length of the exposure and therefore the length of the star trails. Also, make sure your stars are in focus. You can do a short test star trail exposure by terminating a star trail shot after one or two minutes just by repressing the shutter release button. This can give you an indication that you might need to adjust the exposure compensation to better expose the star trail image. The next mode is star time lapse movie. In this mode, the result is a video clip rather than a single image. The setup process is just the same for the other modes. Use a tripod and make sure the stars are in focus. But there are a few other things to adjust. Press the flash button on the control dial and the time lapse menu options are displayed. The effect option lets you create a video with pinpoint stars moving across the sky or some version of short or long trails building up behind the brighter stars. Also, there are three options for shot interval. A shot every 15 seconds will give you a longer running final video, while a one minute interval creates a much shorter video. Also, start with the 25 frames per second video run speed and set your total shooting time to 60 minutes or longer. As with the earlier modes, you can adjust the exposure compensation dial to make your video brighter or darker. You can do a test image by pressing the shutter button and see if you need to adjust the exposure compensation. But when you're ready, you must press the movie button to start recording the movie. Press the movie button again to stop recording or just wait until the preset shooting time has elapsed. So that is the last of the four automated modes. The other approach is to go manual. In the three automated modes that produce a single still image, the end result is a JPEG format image file that you have little ability to post process to make changes. However, in manual mode, you can set the camera to create both JPEG and RAW image files. The RAW file format provides you with complete freedom to modify the look of your image. However, in manual mode, you are pretty much confined to just shooting star landscapes. But you can also now use your camera's zoom lever to achieve a more magnified image of a smaller patch of sky. This is not possible in any of the automated modes. So turn the mode dial to M for manual. Press the menu button and go to camera menu 1 and open the first option, image quality. Make sure you set the camera to take at least raw images and perhaps both raw and JPEG. Mount the camera on a tripod, set the self timer to 2 seconds and use the manual focus process explained earlier to set the camera's focus to infinity. At the bottom of your screen are three settings you will need to adjust. Lens aperture, exposure length and ISO setting to create an exposure that delivers a pleasing result. However, because the earth rotates and the stars are always moving, you will probably need to keep your exposure length to no more than 20 seconds for wide field shots 
and less than 15 seconds for more zoomed shots. Just to get started, set your exposure length at 10 seconds and aperture wide open at 1.8. Now touch the ISO icon on the camera screen and spin the front dial to alter the ISO setting. Keep watching the exposure level indicator on the bottom of the screen and notice how the predicted exposure level changes with the ISO. Once you find an ISO that indicates a properly exposed shot, this is where the indicator sits around zero, you are in the right ballpark for a shot. Take a test shot and see if it is too dark. Most likely you will need to increase the exposure time or ISO to get the brighter image you are probably looking for. In manual mode, it is all about experience and trial and error. Just keep experimenting with the three settings and see what happens. Here are a few examples using the Canon G5X in manual mode. Once you have some raw photo files, you can then delve into post-processing to enhance your images. While post-processing of images is a very big topic for another video, one suggestion is to start with the free processing package from Canon called Digital Photo Professional. Here's a link. You can make lots of adjustments to brightness, contrast, colour saturation, brightness, individual colours and much, much more. So I hope this video proves useful and you take some great astrophotos of your own.